Hello guys, today we'll be doing a, uh, an SSD upgrade for a Lenovo Adia Pad 315A DA05 model. Um, the customer actually had a dead hard drive, so I just told him just to upgrade it to a, a Samsung 500 gig SSD hard drive. So this is the model here as you can see. And we'll do the step one because uh, I don't have my camera yet, but at least with this here, by being able to actually show you pictures, hopefully they're, you know, the resolution is really good anyways at least you guys will be able to follow very simply and then actually pause the pics you know whenever you want to because as when it comes to a video sometimes when you're trying to watch what they're doing it's really tough to see exactly what they're doing so at least here my mouse will actually have a, a mouse over so i can actually show you exactly what needs to be done so first thing you do is you kind of flip your laptop upside down and all you do is as you can see here there's three screws in the bottom three in the middle and four on top so the first six here as you can see will actually have the longer screws which are all exactly the same size here so once you remove all of those you can actually put them into the same pile and you don't have to worry about it but as for the four on top um, those are the shorter screws so just keep those all together so there's only two types of screws the long and the short so just keep the long and the short you know separated and you'll be good to go so you know what, what you got to do is first is kind of just open up the laptop and put the screen side on your table you know I mean I have mine on a glass table which is pretty simple and this is what you would do here sorry to give me two seconds here so once you have it the screen side down I'm just using a guitar pick so as you can see here it's very very simple to start off you can actually do from the the, the the top left hand corner like I did or the top right hand corner but once you got that that pick in between the uh, the groove there you can easily just run it across and then once you've done the top from left to right you can just go straight from the the uh, the top left to to the side to going downwards on the left and the right side and once you have it apart as you can see here I forgot to rotate my bloody picture but as you can see here you know once you've remove the top casing here where you first start off from top left to, to the right side you just peel it open and it will just come off very easily and uh, you know it, it should be a cinch and then this is actually what you get once you remove the whole thing and this obviously here this is where your two and a half inch hard drive is this is the one that failed on my client so and uh, this is what you'll be removing so when you're looking at this here as you can see I put a closer picture that you guys can see it um, you'll see that there's one screw there, one there, and one there, and one there. So remove all of those four screws, which are also the same length. So just put that in a pile. So once you remove that, you know, um, sorry, what I should have said first, I, I kind of had my, uh, my picture reversed. So before you remove that hard drive, if you can, the uh, first thing to do is to unplug the, the battery, which is uh, the battery cable, which is here, the connector for it. So I'll show you a closer zoomed image of it here. And I just use my fingernail, it's pretty simple. You can use like a plastic pick, try not to use anything metallic because last thing you wanna do is end up shorting this piece of metal, you know, that, that you're touching. So just use a plastic pick or like I did, just use your fingernail. You know, I, I use my thumbnail actually. I kinda just picked it upwards from the left and then you can do the same thing on the right and it just comes off very easily you know so and as you can see here so once you remove that then you go back to this step here um and then you just unplug this hard drive here and as you can see if you go back to this section here you can see that you can just grab it from the top here corner here and this corner here with your fingernails with your index and your thumb and you can easily just pull just just wiggle it out that's all you got to do and as, as you can see, it's pretty simple. And then you'll notice on the, the bracket that's holding your two and a half inch drive, you'll see that there's one screw there and one screw there. There's also two on the other side too. So once you remove that, you know, uh, you know it, it's pretty simple here. So this is another you know, detailed picture of what you'll be doing in, once you've removed it. So, And this is the Samsung uh, Evo 870 series hard drive that uh, my client has chosen to go with, which I always recommend my clients to go to Samsung because they're they're very reliable drives and I think today was on sale for like 80 bucks Canadian so that was an awesome deal for a 500 gig you know so um, you know during this COVID time here it's not really easy to get hard drives that quickly but thank God the Canada computer was able to uh, pick the order for my client because I always tell my clients don't wait for the email for them to tell you hey you know your stuff is ready for a uh, you know for pickup I just tell them just to show up you know and give them some BS story and they'll always fall for it they'll pick the order.
they're not a-holes you know they're pretty nice guys um so you know basically once you have the hard drive there take it out of the package and then put it into the original bracket that your old one was taken out of put the four screws back on which is one there one there one there one there and then the other four screws that you removed that was holding the bracket in place as you can see my finger here you put those screws back in one there top right hand corner and then right here and right there so once you actually have that done all you got to do is reconnect your battery which is right here sorry for the blurry picture but you guys have already seen another picture over here anyway so just reconnect your battery by wiggling it back into place and then once you get it back in there it's pretty simple too so here's a clear picture here i kind of just pinched it at the end so i kind of wiggle it with both of my hands it just makes it much easier you know uh, i pinch both sides and as you can see this is a pretty clear shot that you guys can see here and then just push it back down and you're good to go then once you got that in there there's nothing else that you got to do because you've already put all of the screws for you know for the hard drives here you know and uh, then put your original casing back on and put your six long screws back in this area here and then the other four short screws that you have left over put them there and then once you've done that just flip the laptop up open it up and plug in your power cable grab your windows 10 flash drive and put it into the the left side of your laptop which you should have about i think uh from what i can see here i think it's two usb ports and then one usb 3.01 or a 3.2 i guess um but you know wherever the case just put your windows 10 you know uh flash drive in there and we will start the installation process so once you do that um i will delete this one here because this was irrelevant that was a misstep there so what you got to do is you got to hit the f2 key not the escape key the escape key will just give you the the other option that you saw in the original picture that I just deleted so we won't be doing that so just press the f2 key once you power it up and it will bring you to this menu here this is your bias so before we can actually install the uh, the windows 10 you know there's a few things that we have to change in here so that your your usb flash drive can get detected by you know uh you know uh it, be, before you can install the windows so what you'll do first here is that you'll select your move your you using your your uh, keyboard your arrow keys on your keyboard go to the right side to the boot and as you can see here the uh, the boot mode is set to uefi and you don't want that because what you want is you want to do it there so so press enter and then it'll actually give you this option here which you have to you know use your up and down arrow key to bring it to the legacy legacy support which supports your usb legacy devices so that it can be detected once we exit out of this you know bias menu once we save the settings and then the same thing is here this is what your menu will show afterwards the boot priority is set to uefi first we want to change that and bring it to legacy first then once you've done that then that's good and and then what you do is you use your your right you know arrow key bring it to the uh move it over to the exit menu you know uh click enter and then it's going to ask you if you want to save your changes obviously you, you choose yes and then it will automatically boot into your your windows 10 setup which within a couple seconds you will see this and you just basically uh click on the next which is right here and then a couple seconds later since it's an ssd drive these transitions of these screens will change pretty quickly so you just choose install now and then it will bring you to a licensing agreement which you just put a, a check mark in the uh, the square box here and then click next afterwards and it will bring you to this you know menu about five seconds after and once you get into here just make sure you choose the second option which is custom install windows only advanced and then when you choose that it will bring you to your partitioning table which will show you your physical ssd hard drive that you have this so if you have a one terabyte you'll see something close to about 900 and something gigs as opposed to 465.8 like me this is what my 500 shows for the samsung because you never get the full capacity of the drive you get close to it but not the full amount so this is what you'll do so so you click click on select the drive itself make sure it's highlighted and then click on the apply button and it's going to ask you to you know confirm it you know with the partition properly and then you just click ok and then this is what it shows afterwards and then once it, it automatically highlights your 465 gigs automatically so all you have to do is just click on the next button afterwards and it will start installing the windows um 
So once I, I forgot to take a picture of the screen because this is not the first screen that you will see. This is a screen that you see after it's done the install of the Windows. But trust me, the, the original screen that you're supposed to have seen anyways, it would just do its own Windows installation without it requiring for you to do anything anyways. And then it'll just ask you to press any key to reboot afterwards. And this is where it's really important because this is while you're seeing this get ready, um, you know, um, you know, a screen here, which will take about, I would say about five to eight minutes to get to. And once you see this getting ready screen, make sure that you pull, you know, remove your USB flash drive, because if you don't, it will actually go into a loop and do the same install over and over and over again. So by you removing it, it'll actually continue the installation without any interruptions. And then once it's finished getting ready, you'll start seeing the Cortana screen where she starts to talk to you, blah, blah, blah. You'll go through a bunch of transitioning phases of, of um, you know, of it, you choosing your language settings, your your time zones, your keyboard setups, your, you know, your, uh, your login username, you know, if you want to log in through using your email, your Hotmail account, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And once you've done all of that stuff, it will eventually just go to the desktop, which will probably take less than 10 minutes easily. I think it's probably five or six minutes. With this system here, he's got a pretty fast Lenovo system, so it's pretty quick. So if you're doing the same system, like what my client has, exactly the same model, it's not. It's gonna take you no time to get to the desktop. And as you can get to the desktop here, what you'll be doing is I just wanna make sure that all of your drivers are completely installed because what a lot of people tend to forget to do or they don't do it right is to you know, to install their drivers. Um, in this case here with this specific model, since you have Windows 10, Windows 10 automatically actually has all of the drivers for your peripherals. So once you type in device manager here at the bottom left in your search, you will see that it will show up here in device manager on top, highlight it, just press enter and it'll bring you to the screen. Normally if you actually haven't, or, or normally if you actually need your drivers installed or if you actually items uh, or if you have peripherals that need drivers installed you will usually see an exclamation mark or a question mark that will be in yellow that will actually open up through one of these root areas here but as you can see here once you see everything that's clear it's it's completely you know yellow free you know that means all your drivers have been installed properly by windows itself so you don't even need to do anything so your system is literally ready to go. So, I mean, if you have any additional programs that you need to install, like, you know, uh, Adobe Reader, Acrobat Reader and stuff, you can just go to adobe.com and download that because most people, you know, will always need that that app to, to read a lot of their PDF files. And if you actually have, you know, a Microsoft, Microsoft Office 365, you can download that. You know, if you have a licensing for it, you know, you'll have to get that through your account anyway because it's linked to your your email account. So, you know, and then if you have third party, you know, pro programs that you need to install or virus programs, you can do whatever you want. But basically, you know, you're completely done and ready to use your system and you're all good to go. You know, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, anyways, just basically uh, just write down, a, you know, you know, put it in the comments. And then if, you know, if you guys still need help, then I'll uh, try to get back to these videos. And because I'll be trying to post out these videos on a daily or every day or two, whatever, whenever I get work. But during COVID, now it's been pretty dead. But but like as my son was been telling me, he goes, you know what? You do systems almost every day. Why not do these tutorials for it to help people out? So that's what I'm doing. So until I get my video, um, I'll start doing the actual video, you know, tutorials, which I'm not sure if I really want to do because I think with these options here, by showing people these clear pictures, I'll try to do even better clear pictures for you. But as you can see, this here is a lot different than a, a video because I notice when I follow videos sometimes when I need help myself. It's really hard to follow because they're not angling the, uh, the uh, you know, their 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 cameras properly so that you can see exactly what I'm trying to show you what needs to be done. But if you're looking at these pictures here, you know, it, it's 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 just it's it's a, it's a close up for every single shot that you need to do, and you know, it's it's very simple to follow as you can see. That's a little bit blurry, but you know, I'll, I'll do a better one next time. But most of the ones that you will see, anyways. You know, as you can see, it's very easy to follow. And if you ever need to pause it, at least you can pause it without having to rewind or blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it's just a much easier way to follow. So I'm not sure if I want to go back to doing, uh, to not go back, but just to even doing videos. I might just do these, these, these print screens. And then at least once you can hear, and, and I'm telling you what you need to do, it, it's very easy to follow. And, uh, you know, if you guys need help with, uh, you know, downloading the, uh, you know, uh, and making your bootable disk through Microsoft. I'll, I'll provide the link in the description below. And, you know, thanks for watching.